Okay, so let us um, uh, carry over from the uh, previous uh, lecture. So, what we are going to do today is basically draw up a relationship between the uh, properties of the fluid um, before and after a shock wave. Okay. What I mean by that is say this is a uh, shock wave. And when I saw this sort of, and I am calling this say a normal shock wave. Okay. Now, when I saw something like this for the first time, so there was a lot of confusion in the sense that what does this mean that you know the shock wave starts from here and stops over this, or is this should I draw this just as a straight line, or is it uh, you know how thick should this be? You know, so why am I going to draw a normal shock uh, like this? Well, there is no really such thing that you know it stops here or starts there. Or is, there is really nothing. This is basically a region where uh, properties are changing. It's a region of disturbance, right? And I choose the um, my domain in such a way that I will be able to capture, right, the changes in the properties or the the the, the basically the properties of the disturbance, which in this case is a, is a shock normal shock you know as best possible so therefore i choose you know my uh, domain in such a way that uh, all the disturbances within that region will be captured and like we define what exactly a normal shock is you know in previous times it's basically you know we have the properties changing in just this direction okay in one direction really so okay if i do that let us therefore define uh, you know, let us define a, a region in which my shock wave is changing and that is what we call as a domain, right. Let us just uh, define that. So, what this essentially means is that there is some uh, difference or some uh, existence of a uh, disturbance and I sort of you know put a domain around that region of disturbance and try to study it. Okay. So, if I do that, so let us say this is um, right and what I am going to say is that this region is 1 and this region is 2. So, you can say this is upstream of the shock, this is downstream of the shock. Okay. And you know, so we will typically denote the values here as right. So, <clears throat> so, this is essentially the domain that I am going to work with. Now, what I am trying to do here is now is get a relationship or uh, you know get a relationship between these properties and these. Right? So, what exactly what is the relationship between uh, you know the say for example, say the pressures across a shock wave. So, when it is that you know we have a shock wave and then is this uh, what is the relationship of the pressure after the shock wave compared to the uh, you know before the shock wave. So, th those are the kind of questions that we are going to try to answer. So, therefore, mm, uh, let us go ahead and do that and the way we will start this. Okay, before we start developing this, let us just say that clearly, so there is a change in properties. Now, this change in properties is brought about adiabatically. Right? So, let us go ahead, let us do that and start with the energy equation which um, we uh, developed for a normal shock, shock wave in an earlier case. So, let me just uh, write that. Okay, so, what is missing? What is missing is this term the heat flux, but then we consider this as adiabatic and therefore, we get rid of this term. So, this term is not there because we consider this as 
adiabatic right so uh, what we deal with is just this okay so let's see what we, information we can get from this um, uh, relationship so basically what we're saying is okay now we also know that So, if I am able to write this, it gives us some more information about uh, the fluid or the gas that we are considering here. What is that? It is calorically perfect. Now, this is something that we uh, talked about previously. So, if I have a uh, calorically perfect gas, then we can, uh, we can have a constant um, uh, Cp, right. So, th therefore, I can therefore rewrite this equation as So, then we will write this as ok. Now, let us write C p in any other form that we know right. How can we write C p? So, C p can also be written as right. Now, also from here, what we know is that, um, so do you see something that uh, is familiar here or we can replace a couple of terms with something else. For example, is this term familiar? So, this is nothing but the, the speed of sound. So, then you can see here, so this term up here can be replaced by the square of the speed of sound. Okay. So, if I do that, then what I get is this. Okay, so this is uh, what we get. Okay, so now let's uh, sort of label these equations. Now we had this equation out here, so let's call this let's call this A and let's call this B. Okay. So, this is something that we basically get from uh, the energy equation. So, we just sort of trying to deal with this. Okay. So, if we uh, do this, so what we have here basically, so what we have here basically is a relationship between the velocities and the speed of sound. Right. Now, oh, let us, uh, so the, the, the parameters that we are dealing with here are uh, pressure, density, temperature, etcetera. We still do not know anything about that yet. Let us try to get that in into these uh, relationships. So, in order to do that, so how else can we write the speed of sounds? Because that is the term out here, right. How else can we write this? Can I write it like this? So, then I can, if I p by rho, so then if I replace this term over here by this the from equation b what do we get right what we get is Okay, so this is the now relationship. 
call that let us call that as C. So, now you can see that this is a relationship where we have uh, the pressure, the density and the velocity before and after the uh, shock wave. Okay. So, when I say uh, 1 and 2 is basically two regions in the flow field and uh, here essentially there is a, a shock wave in between these two regions. Okay. Now, we will take advantage of these relations and go slightly further. Okay. Now, we talked about a, a reservoir condition and a throat condition in the, in, in the previous uh, lecture. Now, uh, let if I go back to this uh, diagram over here, right. So, you have a flow which is moving something like this. Right. Now, there is a, now before the flow starts say moving, now there is a chamber here say, for example, there is a chamber here, you know, where I develop, where I develop the fuel say. So, we have a fuel which is going to pass, you know, through a chamber and there is going to be a shock wave. Now, where do I develop the fuel? So, I have a chamber in which the fuel is uh, developed. Okay. Now, in that condition, in, in there, the uh, we can say that is a reservoir condition, because the velocities are extremely small, the fluid is really almost not moving. So, we can say that as reservoir, so that the velocities there is 0. Okay. And all the corresponding properties there are the reservoir conditions and we are going to denote that with a subscript naught. Okay. And the other condition that we talked about is that when it passes, you know, when it uh, when it moves, it, there is a condition where we have a uh, throat. We have a throat condition. So, let us just uh, use this word here. Throat condition, which essentially, which means it is a sonic song. Okay. So, Mach number is equal to 1. So, now, if I say take, um, say this relationship out here. Uh, this uh, relation A. If I take this A, right, and I say I consider this, so, so basically 1 and 2, so two regions in the flow field. So, say I consider one of these regions to be a reservoir, right. So, just say uh, instead of saying u 1, now we will just use a generic uh, term which is just C p t. Okay. So, let us uh, sort of do that. Okay. Let us do this here. Okay. So, this is essentially, so T is the temperature anywhere, anywhere in the flow field, right. So, this is anywhere in the uh, flow field and the second location here, the second lo location here is essentially the reservoir. So, I can write that as But as we said, in the reservoir, the fluid is hardly moving. So, this is 0. right? So, what we get here is essentially a relationship between the temperature, velocity and the reservoir temperature over here. Okay? So, if I use this uh, relationship, so then from here, I will try to get um, a, a relationship uh, or an expression for T by T naught say. Okay. So, let us see what I can uh, do with this. So, essentially what I get is right. If I do this, then um, okay. so or Okay. All right. So, if I again divide by t, so I get 1 plus c square by 2 c p into t is equal to t naught by uh, t. Okay. Now, the c p here, c p again, we will write this as in terms of the gamma r by gamma minus 1. So, then I write this as
right? So we know this. So uh, I think by this time you should be able to get what I'm trying, where I'm going from here. So then, so this then becomes okay. Let's uh, do it this way, gamma R T. So it is gamma minus one by two u by a square is equal to t naught by t. Okay. So what happens here is that that this gamma R T is the square of the speed of sound, so which is a square. Right. So, then I adjust the values here. So, this is what I get and what is this u by a? It is the Mach number and that Mach number is at the point where we are considering this u and t. Right. So, therefore, I can actually write this as, I can actually write this as Right. So, that is an interesting, that is still another interesting uh, result that we get from here. Let us call this as 1. So, what we have been to do now is that when, when we get um, the, w w when we bring in the reservoir condition. So, we are able to connect the temperature at any location or, or at any location in the flow field of the uh, shock wave with the corresponding Mach number and the reservoir temperature. Okay, so we continue to do this, and then so similarly, if I've been able to connect, uh, you know, connect the um, temperature, the temperature with the reservoir condition, we should be able to do the same for the pressure and density. Okay, now, as we said that the process out here, the, the the change in the properties, so the process is that is isentropic. So we'll use this uh, relationship, right? So this we know. So for isentropic flow. this holds okay so this is a relationship which holds for uh, uh, for uh, isentropic flow so in one of these if we can we can just you know we can just write this in terms of the reservoir uh, conditions. Now, if I do that, so essentially, so if I am able to do that, so let us uh, write this. So, let us um, use that and you know I am going to use it over here and develop the relationship. Okay, so, if I write that, so let us consider say So, I consider the second location as the uh, reservoir and uh, this P 1 is just, this is just any location. Okay. So, this is then equal to T naught by T to the power gamma by gamma minus 1, but we have already found out an expression for T naught by T given in 1. So, then if I write that then that becomes P naught by P, which is 1 plus okay. So, this is the other, this is the relationship for, this is the relationship for the pressure. So, we can now do the same thing for the density, right. We can do the same thing for the density. So, then again, right. So, then again T naught by T is available here. So, then I write this as Right. So, therefore, I get this relationship.
Okay. So, what we started out um, uh, doing right trying to relate the, the, the relate the properties before and after of the uh, shock wave. So, first things we started uh, with this right we use this. So, uh, this was a relationship between the temperature and uh, the velocities then B gave us a relationship between the speed of sound and the velocity and the C here gave us a relationship between pressure density and velocity. And then we said we will use the reservoir conditions and then we were able to get relationship of the temperature, pressure and density corresponding to the reservoir condition and we were able to use the Mach number. So, this Mach number is at the point where we are considered so considering the flow. So, this could be really any point in the uh, flow field. Okay. Now, so, obviously, now this is a place where we have used now the uh, sonic conditions sorry the, the reservoir conditions. But let us go ahead and try to see if we can introduce the sonic condition. Because see mathematically what mathematically the usefulness of using this uh, reservoir condition for one is that we were able to get rid of the velocity because that is where the velocity is 0. But similarly, mathematically when we use the throat condition the Mach number is going to go to 1. Right. So, let us see if that gives us you know easier relationships to uh, work with. Okay. Now, since uh, we are basically trying to study the properties uh, you know how they vary before and after of the uh, shock wave. Now, the, the point is there are just so many properties. So, we have so many relationships. Okay. All right. So, if we um, uh, do that, so let us see you know what relationship we are going to use over here. So, uh, let us go back and um, uh, see this over here. Okay. Let us use this relationship over here. Okay. Let us use this relationship over here and uh, say that. Um, so, if I use uh, this relationship now, where do I go back and write this? Okay. So, I think I will erase a few things. We will just write this up again when we come back to it. Okay. So, we use this uh, relationship over here and we will consider say point 1 location 1 as the throat. Right? And this all the properties here are basically uh, denoted by a superscript, superscript uh, star. Okay. So, we denote it uh, this way. Okay. So, then if I do that, then what I uh, get essentially is that Right. If I do this, okay. If I do this, then um, what else can we put it over here? So Mach number is one. What the, what does that do to my u star? That is also equal to a star, right? Because Mach number is one, which implies that because Mach number is basically the velocity and the speed of sound relation, to the fraction of. Uh, the uh, u star over a star. right? Now, the star is basically denoting the values at the throat. So, therefore, if this is uh, the throat condition, then u star is basically equal to a star. Okay? So, let us do that. So, therefore, what we get over here is this. Okay, now, let us do one thing. Now, this uh, point here is any point. right? So, this point is any point in the flow field. Okay. Let us do a thing. Let us consider this as the reservoir. If we consider this as the reservoir, then what happens? So, then I will denote that this way. right? And what happens to this? That goes to 0, right? because it is the reservoir. So, that is all we get over here. 
right. So, if I get this, so then we will work with this. Uh, so, this essentially this is our relationship and uh, what we will get here, if I work around this, is this. Or should I do this? Okay, so, maybe I will um, do this. Okay. So, a star. So, what we get, let me, let me just take the time and do the math over here. So, 2 plus gamma minus 1 plus 2 into gamma 1 is equal to a naught square by gamma minus 1. Okay. So, if I do that, what I get over here is a star by a naught square is equal to 2 by 1 plus gamma. Yeah, correct. So, we get that, right. So, a star by a naught is, uh, we get this, right. Mm. Uh, okay. So, we uh, get this and um, let us just uh, remember that how else can I write this? Now, this is this is important here. So, what we have got over here is a relationship between the this uh, the reservoir the, the between the reservoir condition and the throat condition. So, we have basically related these two. Okay. Now, this um, a star a star square is also equal to right this is also equal to this with the speed of sound. So, if I do that, so essentially if this is it, so therefore, I can actually write this as. So, we what we have actually is uh, quite a nice and simple relationship between the uh, throat condition and the um, throat condition and the reservoir condition. Okay. So, let me write that out slightly uh, say neatly. Okay, let us go ahead and write it over here. Okay, so, what we have essentially is this. So, basically what we have is right and Let us call this as the, the, the fourth uh, relationship. Okay. So, we get this. So, that is the relationship between the uh, condition. Okay. Now, from this relationship over here, right? So, from this relationship over here. Now, we the, the second relationship which we developed between any point and the um, and the reservoir. So, now let this any point be the throat condition. So, therefore, what happens here? This becomes p star and this becomes m star, but then this m star is equal to 1, right, because it is in the throat. So, that is, uh, so let us uh, write that out. Uh, you will see what I mean by that, okay. So, what I mean is that, so if you take the from basically the second relationship. Okay. So, from 2, we will just take the point, the, the relationship between uh, the, the throat. So, we have p naught and let this p be the throat. So, we will write that this way. This is equal to 1 plus and this is going to be m star and that is right. So, this is the point that we this this is this, this like I said before is this is any point in the flow field. Now, let that any point in this particular case be the throat condition. So, throat condition means m star. So, if m star so essentially this is a throat. So, that goes to 1 right. So, therefore, so therefore what we get over here is so, if I may just write it like this, say p star by p naught, right, is equal to 2 by 1 plus gamma 
to the bug gamma, bite gamma. Right, so this is this is the uh, relationship. So similarly, we'll do we'll do the similar uh, we'll we'll do the similar uh, you know exercise for the density, and we'll find out the relationship between the throat condition and um, uh, throat condition and the reservoir condition. Okay, so basically, we'll use uh, expression three. So, if I use expression 3, this is what we get. Okay. So, essentially this is the relationship. Okay. Now, if I use okay. So, the expression 3 is Okay, so again, let us consider this to be. So let us consider this to be the throat condition. So then, this becomes that, and then this m square goes to one because it is the throat. So therefore, what we get again is essentially this. Right. So, therefore, what is interesting here is that all these relationships, right. So, we got a relationship for the uh, for the temperature between the throat and the uh, and the reservoir, the temperature, the pressure and the density, right. We got a relationship for all of this only in terms of gamma and for standard conditions for air, we all know that gamma is equal to 1.4, right. So, therefore, if we know this, there is a very easy relationship between these, uh, these parameters. Okay. So, um, having developed this, so let us go and sort of uh, see if we will be able uh, you know, uh, you know, to apply this, how we will apply this say to a uh, you know, set problem. Okay. So, we have uh, done this uh, before actually. So, we use slightly different analysis there, because we did not know all these analysis, all these relationships at the time. Okay. Now, that we know these, let us see how if, if you are going to be able to be, uh, apply this and study this problem. So, okay. so let us see what the problem is, um, let's problem is all about. Okay. So, okay. so, basically we have a rocket nozzle right? and there is an isentropic expansion of flow through this uh, uh, nozzle. right? And so, basically we have a rocket nozzle, there is flow through a rocket nozzle, right? the flow is isentropic in nature and it is a calorically perfect gas. Right, which means that you all these equations or relations that we developed we are really available for use. Okay, so um, so therefore now we have so basically now this goes from say here. Okay, now in this say fluid fuel chamber, in this fuel chamber, okay, the gas is at a pressure of. 15 atmospheres and the temperature here is 2500 Kelvin. Okay. And the gas expands through the nozzle and the temperature here is it is 1350 uh, Kelvin. Right. What 
now the, what we would like to know is that what is the Mach number and the corresponding velocity. Right? What is the Mach number and corresponding uh, uh, velocity in this case? Right? I think what we did last time was we just calculated the drop in uh, pressure. Right? Now, in this case what we are asking is what is the Mach number and what is the velocity and this is you know uh, the flow through a rocket nozzle. So, how do we go about this? Now, it is also given that it is given here. Right. So, this is the ratio specific heat is 1.2. Uh, then what, what are we going to use over here? Right. What are we going to use over here? What sort of relationships are we going to be going to use over here? How will we calculate Mach number and uh, you know velocity? I think the way the the easiest way to tackle a problem is to see what information is available and what we can get out of it, out of that, right? So essentially, what we know is the temperatures, you know, the temperatures of the two places. Here we have pressures; we don't know anything about that. All we know is the temperature before and after. That's all. Okay. So if we do that, so uh, we know that uh, it's from isentropic relationships. So P two P one. Right now, if I do this, now let us consider you know this point, this region as one. Let us consider this region as one, and this region as two. Okay, if I do that, then um, I can write this as and gamma is one point two. Right, we do this, okay, and this comes out to be okay. Now um, we need to find out the uh, so okay. So this is the so this this is this is what I know from my uh, isentropic relationships. Now what I can find out from here is my pressure, pressure at the point two, which is at the exit, which is. Because P one is fifteen atmospheres, right? So we get this, and what we get is a point, which is this is something that we had we had we had done uh, previously in the same problem. So this is less than actually point uh, four atm, okay? Point four atmospheres. Okay. So now the point is we need to find out essentially the Mach number and the velocity, and how do we go about this? Now, what are the relationships? Do you think we can use over here. Okay. Now, first things first that if we were going to use the um, reservoir conditions, that is where the Mach number information is involved. right? So, we developed all the uh, let us say. So, we developed see this here. So, this was 1, 2 and 3. So, these were the relationship of the temperature, pressure and density which involved the Mach number the Mach number and the reservoir condition. Now, is there any way I can consider a reservoir in this problem over here? Now, you can see this is the chamber where the uh, fuel is being generated. So, the uh, fluid velocity here is nearly 0. So, you, we can consider this one, this location 1 as a reservoir and that is what we will do. Okay? We will consider that as a uh, reservoir and see what. So, basically if I do that. So, P naught. Okay. So, I can write this. Right. Now, this is a pressure that I know. This is a pressure that I just calculated. Right. So, therefore, and gamma is something that I know. So, therefore, I can actually get uh, m 2 from this 
uh, m 2 from this uh, relationship and this comes out to be from my relationship. So, you can take the time and do this right. So, p naught is known this is 15 atmospheres then p 2 is point nearly 0 0.4 atmospheres gamma is 1.2 which is given. So, we can just calculate m 2 which comes out to be nearly 3. So, the mark exit mark number is nearly 3. Now, when we do this now I also need to calculate the exit. Uh, so, okay. so, here what is the exit mark number which is say nearly 3. Okay. We will kind of infer a little bit or maybe a lot from these uh, you know from these values. So, we will let us discuss that after we get it. Now, uh, then we have the velocity exit velocity what is the exit velocity? How do we calculate that? So, to calculate the exit velocity what we need is the exit speed of sound right. We need the speed of sound. So, how do we calculate that? Okay. So, let us do that. Now, we know the exit temperature. So, we can find out the exit uh, Mach number I uh, sorry exit speed of sound and this comes out to be right. So, therefore, the exit speed can now be calculated right as Right. So, exit speed is nearly okay. Now, what is interesting to see see over here is that um, you know we have we have a uh, rocket a n a nozzle here and we have a flow which is going through this you know convergent divergent nozzle and um, the exit pressure here is say it is actually say around it is actually less than 0.4 right. So, basically we accelerated the flow right we accelerated the flow and it really it went from like 0 to nearly to nearly 3100 meters per second right. It went up to that high speed you know the in normal standard uh, conditions the speed of uh, sound is what around 350 360. 340 meters per second. So, let us say it is 340 uh, meters per second. So, you can see the Mach number is nearly 3, which means it is traveling at nearly 3 times the speed of sound. right? And uh, so, we basically went from 0 velocity right, from stagnant conditions to a velocity which is as high as this. right? And what does that involve? That involved therefore, a drop in pressure from 15 atmospheres. 15 times the atmospheric uh, pressure to less than 0 0.5, 0 0.4 actually 0 0.4 atmospheres. So, that is how large a drop in pressure right. And there is also a corresponding loss in temperature from 2500 Kelvin to 1350 Kelvin right. So, therefore, all these all this time that we were having the discussion that you know we are uh, right from the you know uh, the invention of Laval that to get such high speeds. So, if I have to get you know such uh, high speed then move it through you know a shape like this a nozzle you know a nozzle like shape. So, if I move it through a duct you know which is converging diverging here. So, then I get speeds which is as high as this right. At the same time however, that it involves very high changes very high changes in pressure and temperature. So, we kind of have a feel for what exactly in what exactly could be numbers like. So, basically what we can say that if I have a uh, nozzle and I am trying to speed up speed up my flow to nearly 3 times the speed of sound then this is the kind of pressure drop and temperature drop that we are looking at 
right. So, that is what uh, in an example like this can uh, sort of uh, you know tell us. So, um, also we will do let, let us do quickly the, the problem that we did right in the first class. Okay, Let us quickly do that before we end today's class. Okay, so, this is one. Now, if you remember in the first lecture that we did a class where we said that if we have a, you know, a, 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 a an airplane right and you had a flow so which is here say in uh, in a free stream which was accelerating from 100 miles an hour to 150 miles an hour right so then there what is the corresponding pressure drop right and what we did here we said that this is let's consider this is incompressible right and then we calculated a pressure drop and then we connected that to the compressibility of the uh, compressibility and we said that the pressure drop is small enough right and therefore uh, it is not going to be the density changes are not going to be dominant and therefore we said we can really consider this as incompressible that's what we did in the last lecture now what we'll do here is let's not consider this as incompressible now we know enough let us consider this uh, as a compressible flow and calculate the actual values of density and uh, temperature and see if we are comfortable enough to ignore them and then say that no, you know the uh, changes are small enough. So, we can just consider that as incompressible. Okay? So, if we do that and uh, so how do we go about doing that? So, this is like, uh, so this one um, yeah. Okay. So, C p okay. We will just uh, use uh, basically, uh, you know, if I use this relationship. Okay. So, we will use our isentropic uh, flow relationships. Right. And what we will do here is that we have a <coughs> at the standard, you know, sea level conditions. So, our uh, density is 1.22 and temperature is Kelvin. Okay. So, uh, these are the standard sea level conditions. So, now if I um, uh, do this, what I know from here is the velocities that is all I know from here. So, and I, so this is the isentropic relationships. Now, let us look at this. Right. So, in here we need to calculate the C p and the C p we can calculate right and this gamma is given as 1.2 right 1.2 or 1.4 and you can take that as 1.4 is the standard air right. And then this is a velocity which is known and this is a velocity which is also known right. So, if you do that then you get a relationship for and uh, relationship between this uh, T 1 and um, uh, T 2 right. Now, if you do that T 1 is something that is available over here you can you can take this as the uh, this, this this point you can take as 1 and this point is uh, 2. So, in here so T 1 and gamma 1 are known and this is u 1 and this is u 2. So, this is all that is known to me. So, in here, so therefore, we can find out uh, you know T 1 this relationship. So, therefore, I can actually get a relationship for T 2 by uh, T 1 right. If I do this, then what I come up with if I do this um, right, what I come up with is this. So, basically the density I get the density changes around this and the temperature change ok. Now, it is really your judgment to now think whether these changes are you are going to really consider these changes consider the flow as compressible 
or you know you can say that this is small enough, we will disregard the changes and just say that this is incompressible. Well, so density change, the actual density change out here is really just about 1 percent, corresponding temperature change is less than 0.5 percent, right. So, it is like uh, less than half percent. So, uh, I think it is safe enough to say that the problem that we at the time said it is incompressible, that stays. We, we do not really need to use the energy equation here or any isentropic relationships over here. We use the Bernoulli's equation to just calculate the uh, pressure change. So, that should be fine. Okay. There is really no dominant uh, density changes in here. Okay. That should be all. Thanks. <laughs>